Today's video, we are going for another Super Bowl, and I uh, want to talk about something in terms of just systematic stuff, something I've been thinking about. And um, it is basically the idea, as I totally get dumbed out on my first drive, luckily he's in five wide, so hopefully there should be no problem. Um, so uh, I want to talk about making the game systematic, and I want to talk about it specifically as it pertains to offense and defense. And it comes down to knowing your weaknesses and knowing what you can and cannot do. So one of the things that's really important is it, essentially like if you equate this to kind of like the, the, the discipline of shooting, it's knowing what shots you can take and what shots you can not take, right? It's knowing what throws they can make, what throws they cannot make. So one of the things that I've been doing defensively is I've been running a lot of cover three bus spies, kind of my base defense. I like it because the sheds in this game are really good. The three-man rush, I think, at a dollar is really effective. So we're kind of basing out of that, primarily for this little yellow zone here to the right-hand side of the screen. I like having that safety on the yellow with a hook curl. And then the other thing that we're able to do, depending on the formation that we're playing, is we're able to take those hard flats, we could put them in curl flats, we could put them in cloud flats even if we wanted to. And what the, what this does is it limits the, um, the space on the field that the offense has to utilize. Again, I wanna talk about this uh, a lot over the course of the next couple of months because I think it really helps explain parts of Madden that uh, a lot of people don't really talk about. And that is the idea of space on the field. That is the idea of the fact that the offense, if you think about it, no matter what offense you run, you are trying to create space for either your routes to get open, for your running lanes to get open, or to get the ball into your receiver's hands where they have space to run with the ball after catch. The defense is just doing the opposite. They're trying to constrain that space. So um, this is another reason why certain formations are really good to the wide side. Certain formation route combos are really good to the, the short side of the field. For example, the double corner. If you run the double corner concept to the short side of the field, it's more difficult to utilize because it's it doesn't have enough space over there for the routes to develop. So what we would do here, we're going to flip it, run double corner to the left. And as I'm doing that, I want to talk about the idea of, you know, power counter constraint as well within this. So basically what we're trying to we're trying to do is we're trying to establish something offensively. Okay? We're trying to establish that we are trying to attack a certain space on the field. Okay? For for this, if you think of, if you just take a look at corner strike, what does that space actually attack? Well, it attacks basically the wide side deep, the wide side uh, short and the wide side intermediate, and then it attacks kind of the seam area with the tight end, and then the backside drag is more of like a like a check down, right? Now, the other thing about this little route combination and corner strike, what I think it makes it even better is to take the running back, put him on a little block and release, put him on something to the flat just to get uh, just to get that that space uh, to be able to be attacked. Because now what they have to do defensively is they have to do a lot of adjustments to be able to defend this and it really does limit what they can do defensively in order to stop you. Now the play Durham attacks kind of a different area of the field. Um, kind of it essentially, this is so I have fumbled so many times so far today. This is terrible, but Durham attacks kind of a different uh, space on the field. It attacks the immediate flat to the right side of the screen. It attacks kind of the seam area to the right side of the screen and attacks the deep area to the right side of the screen. But then on the left side of the screen, you have kind of a high low where you're attacking kind of the middle of the field, but then you're also simultaneously able to wait on the route and attack the intermediate flat to the left and the underneath to the left. I think those kind of elements are very, very important to good route combos in Madden because they allow you to systematically have something that literally attacks the entire field within one route combination. And so the more your route combinations can create um, space and attack space for your offense, the more powerful and potent that they're going to be and the more difficult it becomes for the defensive uh, player to be able to adjust to those things. Now, what's really important to think about is if you think about this, generally speaking, you're never going to be in a situation, if you're calling good route combinations in Madden, you're almost never going to be in a situation where something is going to be covered, okay? Because typically, if you think about it, you're going to have some, you're going you're gonna to be able to attack space. Now, every now and then, you'll play a really good defensive player that adjusts really well and takes away some of your, your main routes, right? But in general, if you're calling good route combinations, it's going to be basic cover two. It's going to be basic cover three. It's going to be basic cover four. It's going to be man-to-man coverage, right? So because of that, 
uh, then what I would say is your post snap reads become a little bit more um, designed in terms of like, not necessarily just mastering the progression, but understanding, okay, what space is open, right? What I, And I'm looking at the space of where my routes are running to, not necessarily just space in general, but I'm trying to figure out, okay, my routes, I know they're running in these different directions. I want to look at the spaces that they're going to attack. And I want to also look at them in a, within a cadence that is going to allow for me to be able to attack quick attack, uh, like attack at certain points. For example, let me just explain it like this. Bill Walsh, uh, when he was when he was coaching, he instituted this drop back uh, feature where essentially the steps of the quarterback would time the throws. So when he hit his back foot, he was looking for his primary uh, receiver. When he when he uh, stepped up one time, he was looking for his alternate receiver. Right. So in a high load read, it would be like he's going to off the rip peak the fade, but then he's going to look first for this corner to the tight end. And then his alternate receiver would be that flat to the left side. And then on the, the second step up field, they would then be trying to hit their, um, their outlet receiver, which in that case on just a simple flood play would be the backside in route. Now the importance of understanding the timing, really what it comes down to is you want to hit these routes when they're, when they're open, you don't want to be late because obviously you're also having to factor in the fact that your opponent has a pass rush. So you have to respect that as well. Now, one of the things I was watching some tape on Patrick Mahomes that I found, and I, I kind of knew this about Patrick Mahomes, but I didn't realize it as significantly. I was watching a Kurt Warner film breakdown on him uh, last night. And basically what, what he had to say about Mahomes was what makes Mahomes like really unique is how fast he can get on and off of targets. So he's able to read and react to the defense much, much faster than, than you would think. Um, so he's not staring down routes. He's, he's moving quickly through the progressions. Sometimes the one danger that uh, someone like Mahomes can have is he can almost move too quickly through the progressions. Now, if you have to have a, if you, if you have a problem with moving too slow through your progressions and moving through quickly through your progressions, you probably want to move quickly through your progressions. Okay. Now that being said, you also have to understand when you're doing this, that you want to be patient with your routes a little bit. So um, you do want to kind of like read the field. You don't just want to, you know, like just quickly like jump so fast that, that you're not even looking at things. You do want to be able to like truly identify what they're doing, how they're playing defense, because if you don't do that, you will miss wide open receivers. At least I'm just as guilty of it as anybody. All right. So that, those are some, some tips for um, reading the defense and kind of within the systematic approach, trying to be a little bit more, um, you know, if this, then that with our routes, I think that's super, super important. One thing that I feel like I continue to come back to with Madden is it is a video game. And the, the reason I'm saying that is because one of the things that I fall victim to is there's only so many possible inputs that your opponent can do, right? What, what we typically tend to think is like, oh, what if they do this, this, and this, and this? And you have to remember like it, how hard it is for you to play defense. It's just as hard for the other player. How hard it is for you to adjust. It's just as hard for the other player. So those are like really, really important tips to remember as you're running, as you're playing through the game, because even if they know what to do, oftentimes they might not be able to get that adjustment off. So you always want to run your plays with confidence that somebody is going to get open if you make the right read. You never want to be in a situation. And if you actually watch most of the best players in the world, if you watch back their game tape, almost always when you study film study at a high level, the reason players lose at the highest of levels in Madden is almost inevitably their own mistakes. They make a mistake that causes them to lose. Okay. So they'll throw a pick at the wrong time um, or they'll have a clock management error, you know, or, the, you know, just you, you've kind of fill in the blanks. You've kind of seen most of you guys have probably seen the games. If you go back and watch my game against young Kiv on the channel, you would see exactly what I did that ended up losing the game. I should have won the game by several scores and I ended up just making these mental mistakes down the stretch of the game. And it was ironic because I actually made those mental mistakes when I had the game in control. Sometimes pressure 
pressure I've always has been known to, uh, you know, like, like force people to into mistakes, of course. But there's all kinds of different pressures, okay? It's not just like in, in, in defense we tend, typically, you know, tend to, tend to think of pressure as like sending five or sending six. Not exactly the case. You can send three people in this game and get pressure. You can, with your zone coverages, you can create, like, pressure on the quarterback because we're taking windows away, right? So, anyways, those are some thoughts on pre-snap reads. I want to talk a little bit more about defense here as we're getting into this next drive. Um, and one of the things here that I am starting to really understand uh, in terms of a systematic approach to defense is the idea of space, um, constraining space. Formations allow certain things from a space uh, from a spacing perspective. For example, if I bring all my receivers into a compression set, there are certain um, p positions on the field that I can get to faster than if they are in a spread set. There are certain routes that I can use that I might not be able to use if I'm in a spread set. So as I'm a defensive player and I'm trying to think about how I'm going to defend that, there are certain key things I know I have to do, be able to defend. Um, one of them, like in this example, is the streak to this X receiver. And the reason I'm cross banning it is because I've I've played against people that can throw that over the hook curl. So again, failure always teaches if you learn from failure. When you fail in Madden, let's say, and I mean, I'm talking about like micro failure. Let's say like all your routes were bagged, or let's say that they, you know, just hit you with the nice route or whatever. They beat your defense. They kind of dotted you. They didn't just like take a check down, but they kind of dotted you. You want to look back like right there. He kind of dotted me. Why? Well, because we didn't get pressure. We didn't get pressure. He got a little bit of a route bounce. So you always want to be like understanding why things are happening. And if you don't understand why things are happening, it's impossible to make adjustments and improve. So defensively, you always want to understand this is why this is happening. And you want to use those critical thinking skills. It's the only way that you'll ever improve at a high level defensively. And it's really the only way that you'll actually understand how to adjust to certain formations, because the way that you defend bunch is different than the way that you defend tight, which is different than the way that you defend trips tied in. Now, the way that you, now there are principles and ways that you defend trips tied in that might carry over to tray open because there's similar formations and there's similar spacing. Uh, there's sim similar uh, spacing formations. So just some thoughts in terms of defense here. Uh, new route combo kind of working with here. Uh, I actually, I think Goes was running this. I saw him run this. I thought it was like kind of decent. So uh, trying it out myself. Although I will say <laughs> these people that are running these four-man rushes right now in Madden, they have been kicking, like not kick, like I be, I'm winning the games, but they are shedding. <laughs> the four-man rush in this game is pretty darn good right now. So be interested to see how much 6-1 we see in Madden Bowl. I'm sure 6-1 uh, six ones pressure is just unique. It really is. It's there's not a whole there's not much in the game like it. But uh, anyway, let's see if we can get this route combo open. I know this isn't the best play. So like right here, it's like he's running man coverage. You can kind of tell that. But from a space progression, where are my routes attacking? Well, I'm attacking deep, horizontal. So I'm looking fade first. No, okay. Now I'm looking at my drag. Okay, I got the pick that I wanted, and we just moved the ball down the field. Patrick Mahomes is brilliant at this. Um, if you actually watch his his game tape, he is so good at he, what, what what you what, when you watch NFL quarterbacks at the highest level and you actually study like why they're doing what they're doing and you really look at the read progressions, what they're basically trying to do, and this is this is universal. This is any great quarterback ever, any great quarterback, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes, it does not matter. Okay. What they're basically trying to do is they're trying to give the make the game easy for themselves. Okay, as I get, ugh, I just get these stupid bumps. Make the game easy for yourself. Okay, so instead of trying to read five different routes on one play, you want to look at the pre-snap read. And sometimes, like in this guy's case, he's kind of given certain things to me pre-snap. Okay, so that's important to, to at least just identify. He's kind of given certain things to me pre-snap. Okay. But based off of that, as my routes just bump again, this is why two men under is low key. Actually, look at that bump. And he's going to get a pick out of that. That's crazy to me. Oh, that's frustrating. But you want to make the game easy for yourself. I didn't do that there. Silly me. <laughs> um, two men under is low key kind of underrated because they just do this bumping stuff and you get random stops. But see, we're not trying to play to get random stops. We're trying to play to get stops. Right. So that's important, too. 
that's a great adjustment right there. A lot of people don't know about this. Uh, real quick, if you're watching the video, a little gem for you. If you are ever playing Gun Bunch and you are not really that worried about the C route on the on the solo wide receiver side, put the solo wide receiver corner in a deep half. Takes it takes so much away from from what people are trying to do. So. So he goes to bunch here. Uh, actually, goes to bunch strong. I think I'm gonna do this. Hopefully, he stays in bunch strong. I don't know how I would honestly defend bunch strong. I actually think I kind of lean towards something like this. Let me take that away. Let me catch that. Now, uh, one other little tip for defense that I did want to give you guys as we're talking through some things. Another way that you can constrain space and and um, make throwing windows more cl like cloudier, right? Is you can use super tall players. You can use super tall players. Now, I know it sounds like, oh, well, duh, I could use, of course I could use super tall players, right? But I'm serious. Use super tall players. We're at a point in the year right now where the Ghost of Mutt Future theme team is, is the best theme team in the game, okay? And what I would recommend to you guys is to put... Julius Peppers on the left side slot corner. The reason why is because the fatigue glitch, um, the fatigue deal is back. So you need a slot corner that can actually, uh, um, you need a slot corner. Oh, I got a little strip fumble. Thank you, karma. All right. So I got a little strip fumble there, but um, you want these tall guys. You really do. They make a big difference in your coverage. Um, you will catch, I mean, if you go back and watch the game I played against Young Kip, Rob Gronkowski made a crazy play mainly probably because of his height, all right? So really uh, would recommend that. I don't know why I did not, I've did not. i not been running this play the whole time. Tight end trail routes are just not as good as they were last year, and it's unfortunate because I really think like that wide trail play would be so good if a tight end trail route would cook man like it used to. Now here, I'm going to do the smart thing. I'm going to take this to the uh, two-minute warning because this is my Super Bowl. I'm not super concerned about him coming back here, but – you know, just little things. Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about more in the channel, I'm super excited about it. If you have not read the book, The Talent Code, you should really check that out. I have, I am like going through that book right now and it is blowing my mind. It's all about basically how skill is created and what are the principles of skill development and skill acquisition. Madden is a skill. It is a teachable, learnable skill. You can um, learn to play Madden and you can learn to be one of the, I, in my opinion, I think you can truly learn. Um, I could have thrown the running back, but I don't want to risk that. You can truly learn to be one of the best players in the world. You truly can. If you put the time in, if you put the work in, you can be one of the best players in the world. 100%. Okay. So because of that, uh, this book, The Talent Code, is really helping me a lot um, in understanding how I need to, um, just how I need to approach getting better at Madden. Can I playmaker this guy, please? Thank you. Um, how I need to approach getting better at Madden. And for me, where I'm at in my, in my Madden development, I think where everybody's at in their Madden development, they could benefit from this book. And the reason why is because this book is, is basically about taking a systematic approach to skill acquisition. And so they're going to be very intent. It's going to teach you how to be very intentional. It's going to actually teach you how the brain works at a really high level where you can understand how um, like the best players, best athletes, best musicians, best artists, best, best um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like masons or tool guys, whatever you call them, um, how, how it's done, how it's developed, how, the how art and skill and all and science how they all come together and they they basically make people like Patrick Mahomes they make people like Tiger Woods Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant people that people that can execute at the highest highest of level okay you really need to read that book it will help explain a lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about i think it's going to help Everybody get better at Madden. Um, obviously, we're going to apply it within the setting of Madden, truly. Uh, but one of the big things that the, the, the book is based on is myelin. And myelin um, is essentially this tissue that wraps around your uh, wraps around um, electrical circuits in your brain, and it makes those circuits stronger. I talked a little bit about strength training on the channel before and kind of shared uh, where I was at with strength training. can basically uh, press one plate. Uh, bench two plates, squat three plates, and then deadlift four plates. A little bit higher than that, but that gives you kind of a general uh, picture of, of where I'm at. But the biggest thing that I wanted to say with that is as we look at, as we take this approach to cognitive things such as Madden, 
what it does is it re- when you're strength training, you're just essentially every single workout, you're trying to add a little bit of weight until you can't anymore. And that's hard. It, it gets hard after a while. But where muscle is developed, and this isn't a revolutionary concept, but where muscle, muscle is developed or where strength is, is gained is when you are close to your edge. You're stretching yourself. There's, there's some kind of strain on your muscle to a point at which it is now, um, is now kind of like a, uh, there's a working aspect to it. Um, you could fail, right? You could fail. That's, that's the idea. And so when you're learning anything, it's kind of similar to that. It's, it's basically the idea that I want to focus really intensely. And when I fail, I want to understand, and this is really important. I want to understand why I fail, because if I don't understand why I fail, then it's really, really, really hard uh, for me to basically learn from that. It's hard for my brain to put the pieces of the puzzle together. That is super, super important, right? That is super, super important. So, and you can take that concept to the finest detail and you, and masters certainly do masters certainly take that, um, to the highest detail, right? I was talking to one of my friends the other day, who's a very good, uh, very good competitive shooter. And he shared this with me. He's won a couple championships really. And, and, you know, I, I barely scratched the surface of what this guy knows, but I do want to share this with you guys. Cause I think it applies to Madam. He said, number one, you want to become proficient with all of your tools, right? Part of repetition, part of working hard, part of mastering your craft is becoming proficient with the tools that you have in your toolkit. That's thing. That's what eBooks do. eBooks show you the tools, right? They show you the route combinations. They show you the defensive adjustments. They, they help you with stuff like that. That's the whole point of our Patreon. Um, it's where I explain everything. If you guys aren't in the Patreon, it's only $10. And you literally get everything that I know and everything that I've learned. And I've learned a lot this year. I feel like this one have been one of my better years, uh, just in terms of like learning at a high level. Um, I feel like I've, I've learned so much about the game this year that will apply to future Madden. So I'm super excited about that. Again, we share all of that with you on the Patreon page. All right. It's only 10 bucks, super inexpensive in my opinion. So make sure that if you guys want to get better at Madden, um, there's literally always, that was a great adjustment by him. Oh, that was so painful that I threw that pick. So that would be an example of failure. <laughs> um, but but like I said, if you want to learn the routes, Patreon, I know I threw a pick. It was a bad read by me, but um, just understand this real quick. So I actually break this down. I will uh, break this down when we go to half, and I'll explain what happened. It was a great uh, play by him, and it was me just, again, this is this is the important part. It's not that practice, and we, maybe maybe you, like me, have heard people say this before, but you never understood what they meant. It's not that practice makes perfect. You can practice badly and perfect bad habits, right? Practice does not make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect, right? That is a very, very important um, thing because um, the more that I practice perfectly, the more that I execute the play perfectly, the more that I understand the play perfectly, the better that, that um, things are going to be for me. The, the, the better I'm going to get, the more myelin that's going to wrap. Because myelin wraps, myelin is a, a tool in your toolkit, right? It's understanding your tools. Myelin will wrap bad habits and it will wrap good habits. And what I mean by wrap is, like I said, I just, it just wraps the circuitry in your brain that is telling your muscles to act, right? So the more myelin you have, the better and more quicker and more efficient you are at a given thing, okay? That is a very, very important point. Uh, to understand. All right, let's see here. I'm just trying to get it a half. I don't lie. I, I'm just like kind of like blown away that man coverage is just bagging out here. It's not going to bag me long term, but it's just kind of frustrating. I keep leaving Derrick Henry on the field too. I do want to break down kind of what he did there. To the, I think that would be kind of helpful. So hopefully here we'll get something. It'd be great if we could uh, actually make a play here. Let's see what we can get. There it is. All right, let me break one tackle. Let me break one tackle. Make it interesting. Oh, Dre Archer. Okay, so uh, real quick, halftime. I wanted to I wanted to break this down for you. So he did this thing. So uh, okay, I just want to break down, like, again, failure. This is really important. When you fail, you want to understand why you failed, right? So he runs man across the board. He sends three. This is kind of his base defense. It's shaded underneath man. 
So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, the corner route's going to pull the half, and then that post is going to come open over the middle, right? But if you look, the corner route gets literally bumped to all. I mean, it just gets completely destroyed. So it can't pull that safety on the right-hand side. And so the safety is able to go pick up the post route. So he actually didn't make an adjustment. I thought he, the way the safety reacted to the post, I thought he might have put him in a middle third or something. But no, let's hope that goes out of bounds, please. Thank you. All right. So anyways, uh, when you fail, you have to put the reps in. This is what film study is for. Um, it's learning what to do and what not to do, right? It's learning what to do and what not to do. Another observation that we've made from the best people, the, the highest performers in any field, they are all, without it, without a doubt, they are all hungry to learn about their craft, so much so that they will basically stare at people to learn. So what, what I mean by stare at people, I just mean they will study what the best do and they will copy that until they can figure out what they want to do uh, on their own. So it's kind of interesting that can I get that over the top of him? Thank you. Finally. Um, so it's kind of fascinating to me that you start by imitating what the best players in the world do. And this is something that Madden players have been talking about for a very long time. You want to watch film study on the best players in the world and understand why they do what they do, what they do first, you have to understand what they do. Second, you have to understand how they accomplish it or how they do it. So how do they actually make those adjustments? How do they put those routes on the field? But third, and this is where the learning occurs, you have to understand why they are doing it. You have to understand why they are doing it. If you can understand why they are doing it, when you make that brain leap, it will embed it into your head and it will allow you to learn to make connections you would not be able to make otherwise. Okay. Super important, super, super important. So with that being said, we're going to do a lot of film study um, over the course of the next couple of uh, weeks here on the channel. I'm still going to be doing tip videos, um, but I think you guys really enjoy these gameplay videos from what I've seen just from the views and stuff. So I did want to continue to do this. It's a lot of fun for me. Uh, just talking, uh, really just talking about what I'm learning. I think it's helpful. I hope it's helpful. If it is, let me know. Um, if it's not helpful at all and you just want to know like the best blitz in the game in five seconds or less, then I can give you that as well. Um, I'm still going to be doing tip videos every single day, but I, I think what I'm going to do is maybe once or twice a day, I'm going to do some kind of film study and it might be short or long. I was thinking I'm, I might do some shorter film study breakdowns, not do like the whole game, but do like a certain segment of the game that highlights a certain thing. Um, you know, so up to you guys, whatever you think, uh, wanted to just want to know, we'll see how you guys watch that and whatnot. If you, if you guys don't watch it, then we'll do something different on the Patreon. I'm going to be doing a little bit deeper dive into film rooms. I'm still gonna be doing eBooks, of course, but I thought something that might be helpful for me. And I, I would assume is like I said, if it's helpful for me, it's probably helpful for a lot of people is you need to understand, like, like I said, not only what they're doing or how they're doing it, but why they are doing it, it is so important. Because if you don't understand why, you will do the most random things and it won't work because you don't even understand the thought process behind it. It's why I could literally, um, and I've done this on Twitter, I've tweeted some of the best defenses and route combos in this game for 100% free and it doesn't really, like people like it and it's cool and they learn, but what they don't learn, they don't, they don't embed it, right? They don't embed it, they don't truly learn because they don't truly understand why it is good, what it attacks, what the defense can actually do to counter it, and then when they do that, what that leaves them vulnerable to. So those are some of the things that I want to talk a lot more about on the channel. I think it uh, will just teach Madden in a different way. And I just know this is something something I've been really wrestling with myself. So I, I, like I said, I think, it, I think it could definitely apply to a lot of people. I think a lot of people don't know, like if you're like me, it's kind of like sometimes I watch the MSS games like there's it's it's like this. This is this is this is how I could sum it up. I watched the Chiefs Ravens game on Sunday, as a lot of you, I'm sure did. OK, so we watched the Chiefs Ravens game, right? All right. Well, if you as you're watching that game, they really only show the quarterback. Occasionally on instant replay, they show like, um, you know, they may show like the receiving and, and how they engage downfield. But you don't get the, the the Madden view, so to speak. You don't get the bird's eye view. You don't see what the defense is really doing. You only really see the line of scrimmage, which is a big part of football. 
but you don't see uh, how they're putting coverages on the field and, and all of that stuff. You just don't see that, right? So the reason I'm, the reason I'm saying that is there's another way to watch football. And it's what it's what pretty much every you know Kurt Warner, JT O'Sullivan, a lot of those guys, or Vlosky. I'm sure he watches a lot of all. It's called All Twenty Two, where you can look at the game from all kinds of different angles, right? All kinds of different angles, and those angles will tell a different story about the game. So, for example, I watched the Chiefs game, and I had no idea some of the coverages and some of the, the the way the game was going until I watched a 35-minute breakdown from Kurt Warner on it this morning where he actually showed every third down the Chiefs or the, the Ravens had and why they were having such a difficult time uh, basically converting on third down. It was a combination of bad play calls and bad execution, right, as it always is. So anyways – that that's what I'm talking about when I talk about Madden. You can watch a game of Madden and you can you can enjoy the game of Madden. It's what I'm going to do later today. We're going to watch the the MCS games, right? We're going to watch them just for the pure like like the I don't know what the right word would be, like the viewing pleasure of it, right? But then we're going to study and that there's two different types of that. So I want to do more studying here on the channel. It will help with more um, just retention, I think, as far as like helping people get better. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay. And uh, if you want to check out the full ebooks, they are in the Patreon.